Hello, one and all, to this week's Kerbal Space Program video, in which we begin our adventure in the astronaut complex. This is because we need to recruit some plucky Kerbal Nauts to carry out this week's mission, which will be a space station resupply. The space station in question is this one here, and it's one that I built some time ago now using space shuttles, so I thought I ought to continue the theme of space shuttles this week and carry out this mission using a space shuttle too. However, Lan Aerospace's main shuttle, uh, the Tatsu, has already flown several missions on this channel. Uh, way back in 2017, <laughs> ancient times now, we used it to extend a space station, and then late, uh, last year I used it several times in one video to construct the station that we'll be visiting in this video. So I therefore decided that it was time to come up with a new design, and this is it. Uh, the colossal Wyvern shuttle. Its design was created around two principles, really. It had to look cool, which is admittedly probably the highest priority for me, uh, but it also had to fulfill this mission's requirements in just one flight. The requirements for this mission are to add a fuel depot to the station, which will be a little over one full orange tank in capacity, because the orange tank is generally used to uh, showcase a shuttle's uh, cargo capacity, so a little bit extra shows that this shuttle can do a little bit a little bit extra, I suppose. And the other mission parameter this time around for this flight is to uh, switch out the entire crew of the space station for a new set of Kerbal Nauts. Hence are starting out in the astronaut complex. Because, you know, the crew of the current space shuttle has been there for quite a while. It's getting boring up there, even though I sent Santa Claus up to them not too long ago to send them some presents. I think they want to go back home. So we'll swap them out. Now the space station's bigger, we're going to need six new Kerbal Nauts rather than just four. And so we needed more seats than just the standard shuttle cockpit in KSP, which only has a capacity uh, of four. So I thought to address the need for increased seat capacity for this shuttle, I decided to just go all out and increase the total capacity to 20. And the shuttle is fitted with a probe core too, so it can theoretically fly entirely by probe control. So it could theoretically, you know, drop off 20 Kerbals at a station and fly back empty or vice versa if we wanted to. So, you know, I feel like this is a pretty flexible, diverse shuttle, uh, a worthy replacement for the Brutus and Tatsu for Laon Aerospace, although admittedly it is kind of a bit ridiculous. Speaking of things that are ridiculous, uh, this thing is monstrously difficult to fly, uh, as is generally the way with space shuttles in this game. You've got to be very, very vigilant in terms of flying, although I did get a pretty nice encounter uh, straight off the bat, which was a little bonus. I had to use four vectors as opposed to the standard three, just because of the massively increased dry mass for this craft. I did mention this in last week's video when I was flying the Omega battleship, that when you're flying big, ridiculous crafts that have terrible aerodynamic profiles, so they don't fly very uh, with very much stability, you basically have to just train yourself to only fly using the nav ball and just completely ignore everything else on screen. I know it might sound obvious, but it, it is very... I always find it much harder to fly a space shuttle when I'm looking at... or anything that's difficult when I'm looking at the screen, which generally I do. I tend to eyeball my gravity turn more than I actually look at the nav ball. But uh, in cases like this, you basically just have to use the nav ball, and the way you do it is by basically, you know, the little central uh, targeting graticule in the very middle of the nav ball. Keeping that as close to the prograde marker as you can will just make sure that this thing, the shuttle, doesn't end up flipping or anything. So it's very important to offset your vector engines to to point along the ship's centre of mass if you're finding that your shuttles carry on flipping despite you sticking to this uh, good flight profile system. Anyway. The ascent is over. I mean, this is the annoying thing about doing these sorts of commentaries, right? Because I always speed up my footage so that you know, the, the video doesn't drag on too much. But then by the time I've done all my introductions and mission profiles and all that, the ascent's already done. And I usually like to be able to talk about the ascent to some capacity. So sorry about that. I guess I can talk about what's going on now. Usually with space shuttles, I tend to use the Terrier engines or a monopropellant engine for uh, a, you know, vacuum travel. Because that's kind of more realistic and in line with NASA's space shuttle. But... The uh, thrust rate ratio for monopellant engines and terriers is not very good, so I decided to go with a Wolfhound engine, which is from the Making History DLC for all of our uh, in-space maneuvers, and then we also have a couple of jet engines just to help us get back to the runway. Although the thrust rate ratio of the Panthers is not very good, they can't really power the shuttle in flight, it's just basically there, they're basically there to extend its gliding range in case you kind of undershoot or overshoot the KSC runway. But for, 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 um, I feel like I'm gonna spoil it anyway, but uh, for the sake of this video I thought I'd just show you getting back to the runway without the need for jet engines, just to prove that this thing does work without the need for jet engines. So, I haven't really talked much about my maneuver, my maneuvering and, uh, encounter, 
uh, which I probably should have, but I didn't. But I feel like if you're trying to get better at rendezvousing and stuff like that, a space shuttle, whilst you, you could use a space shuttle to practice, I guess, it's probably not a very ideal craft. You want something smaller with better thrust to weight ratio and more delta V to play around with. Um, it's just basically playing around with prograde, retrograde, normal, anti-normal, and uh, radial in, radial out in order to get as close an encounter as possible. Uh, you can do the inclination fixes at your uh, ascending and descending nodes. And uh, that's about it. I recommend just watching a dedicated tutorial if you want some more elaboration on getting an encounter. Because this video really isn't. Uh, that's not really the focus of this video. Uh, in fact, the focus of this video, again, five minutes over five minutes in, I'm now just talking about this. Um, this topic was chosen by the viewers on Twitter and or Discord if you've got the notification on Discord. I basically uh, had plans for a different video this week, which has now been pushed back to probably next week because of unforeseen circumstances. Uh, so I kind of said on Twitter, look, I've got basically one day to make a video, so I can't really, and like, as in film and mission, uh, edit all the footage together, do the commentary, upload it all in the space of one day, so it can't be anything too kind of massive in terms of scope. So I laid out a few options, and the winning one was Space Station Resupply, so I hope, I hope this was a satisfactory uh, result of that poll <laughs> if you voted for that uh, option. The other option though was uh, doing something with the stock rover crater crawler which almost almost had the same number of votes as the space station video uh, save for like a couple of votes. So I'll probably do that at some point because the crater crawler it's a really nice rover design but it's quite an awkward shape so I thought I'd showcase uh, a practical way of incorporating it into a lander design. I don't know how I do this yet though I'd need to think about it but I'm sure I could probably come up with something right. So then I realized that I'd made a mistake in this shuttle's design Design. Well, not a mistake, I'd just sort of forgotten to add something. I'd forgotten to add a docking port to the shuttle. So my plan was to dock it to the big shuttle docking arm on this space station. But that didn't work out too well. So it just if you download this craft file, if I remember to put it in the description, uh, I would probably just switch out the nose cone for a shielded docking port. Just, you know, just so it'll work a bit better. Make it a little bit more practical. But uh, other than that, that was the only real flaw to the design, to be honest. Here's some nice little cinematic... Uh, shots of it drifting peacefully next to the space station and then we can open up the cargo bay doors and prepare to uh, get the orange tank docked to the space station I suppose. I really ought to actually remember the name for the orange tank park. It's not even orange, I didn't even colour it orange in this video but you guys I'm assuming know what I'm talking about. In fact I don't think the default colour is even orange anymore but the classic uh, rest in peace, uh, orange tank in Kerbal Space Program. It's been recolored to this black and white thing, but you can still, you do still have the option to make it orange if you want. But I guess black and white does look a bit more spacey and a bit more in keeping with the color scheme, general aesthetic of this space station. So I guess this probably was a better option out of the two. And as you can see, it is still fully laden with fuel. The space shuttle wasn't draining it as it was, as it was flying. And that's both the air quotes orange tank and the little tank that's attached to the end. It's quite hard to differentiate it, but there are in fact two fuel tanks here. <laughs> you may have been wondering, some of you may have been wondering at least, when we were flying along, the amount of delta V that we had uh, wasn't really matching up to the amount of fuel we had, and that's because I'd disabled the uh, flow from this tank because obviously we want to deliver this tank fully fueled to the space station. Wouldn't be a very useful fuel depot if it was empty. So uh, our, our space shuttle's Delta V will now have increased following the uh, uh, removal of its cargo. And speaking of the Delta V of the space shuttle, it has uh, probably too much actually. It has over a thousand units of Delta V in LKO, so we can pretty much go anywhere in the Kerbin system within reason. Obviously, it can't like, land on the moon or something, but you can like it could resupply a. Uh, geostationary orbit station for example just about I think so uh, it's got a lot of a delta V although the downside of this is that the aerodynamic profile is therefore very very bad in cases like this where we haven't really used very much fuel there's a lot of fuel sitting at the back of the shuttle so as a consequence of this it's very very easy to, for it to it's very easy for it to flip into like a flat spin and stall and this is a space shuttle we're talking about which are which always fly horribly anyway so it's pretty challenging to fly as are all space well, as are all space shuttles as I just said but this is even more so so I'm going to do speed up the footage nice and quickly we're just going to quickly board on all our new Kerbals and uh, get the old ones docked onto the shuttle obviously since I couldn't dock the shuttle to the uh, the space station I'm going to have to get everyone on like a spacewalk to get on board the space station but hey, it's a good thing to stretch their legs I guess or whatever the uh EVA pack equivalent of stretching one's legs would be. So uh, in order to help me distinguish which Kerbals were new and which Kerbals were old, I put all the existing crew members along the uh, the docking arm just here and then I would just transfer everyone that's on the docking arm back to the shuttle. But I, I realised I'd only put, I realised after the fact I should say, I realised I only put three Kerbals in there so I had to guess which Kerbal left on the space station was one of the old crew. 
I hope I got it right. I did leave them with like three male Kerbals, three female Kerbals. Got a nice diverse split there. Uh, so even though I think I, I, it should be fine. Kerbals love space at the end of the day. I'm sure the old crew didn't even want to leave. But you know, business is business. And hey, we might be building a new space station soon anyway. And they could be the new crew for that. In fact, speaking of space stations, I still need to go and get Valentina off the Jewel space station. I keep meaning to like go and get her in one of my videos. And I keep forgetting because I like having the... Uh, the main four Kerbals always ready to go on missions like this for videos. So uh, maybe I can do that in a separate. In fact, there's another thing I need to do for that space station as well because I actually left some debris in orbit. And on this save file, I'm trying to keep everything uh, debris free from deep space. So I do need to revisit that station in some at some point. So there, there we have it. A video idea. We've discussed two future videos right now. We've done the crater crawler. We've done the get Val back from Jewel and also deorbit some debris. Wow, 2019 shaping up to be a really exciting year so far, isn't it? Um, next week, though, I pr I've got a pretty good collaboration coming up. I'm assuming a lot of you probably know who that's going to be with at this point. But maybe if you don't, it could be a nice surprise. So we're going to deal with the shuttle just here. I did have to quickly do a reload of the quick save, though, because I forgot to retract the uh, satellite dish on the side of it, and it got destroyed by the aerodynamic forces. So uh, if you see a little stealth cut there, that's why I had to reload. It did take a couple of attempts as well, admittedly, trying to fly it back because it kept on flipping over. But eventually I got it. It's a similar principle to the Ascent, really. Just keeping it pointing as close to the prograde marker as you can will just try help to maintain some stability. I also try to facilitate some uh, stability by pumping uh, as much fuel into the anterior tanks as I could. Admittedly, most of the tanks are still pretty far back, so it didn't do much. But it still does something, and uh, doing things like disabling the front canards for most of the descent will also help keep the centre of lift as far back as possible. Because that's kind of, that's what causes these unstable craft, really, is having the, the centre of mass too far back and the centre of lift too far forward. Um, luckily, the crew capacity, the, the crew module, I should say, at the front adds a bit of weight to the nose, so it wasn't too bad all in all. So now I'm just keeping an eye on those front temperature gauges. The, uh, the the most likely to explode would be the fuel, not the fuel, the uh, the nose, the nose cone. Great, I'm um, getting my words out today, aren't I? And then we can see the uh, the mountain range coming up to the KSC. Uh, this thing does lose speed very quickly because it's not very aerodynamic. So I thought, let's go for a nice safe uh, and high up uh, descent profile. And then I realized I was probably going to overshoot the runway actually. So I did end up having to do some very, very last minute high G-force turns to get ourselves slowed down enough that we wouldn't massively overshoot. Although I could have gone for the island runway, I guess, but oh well, hindsight's a wonderful thing, isn't it? So uh, just a second, we're going to do some incredible G-forces here. Luckily our Kerbals are made of stronger stuff than us mere humans. Uh, so they were, they were fine. They were fine. And as I mentioned, we are going to do this thing without needing to throttle up those jet engines. I think, in fact, did I just throttle them up just then? Either way, it wasn't needed. It wasn't needed. Uh, I do have them activated here just in case, but I don't, I feel, well, maybe I'm doubting myself now, but I'm pretty sure we didn't actually use them at all. I mean, we didn't use them. We definitely didn't use them to any significant capacity. And like I say, they don't really power the shuttle anyway. They just kind of extend its gliding range slightly. So... Uh, you kind of do have to get your glides down to the KSC pretty accurate in order to get this thing to the runway because it can't power itself too much. Unless you just use the vector engines and cheat. <laughs> uh, wait, there we go. We have touched down at the KSC. So that concludes another successful mission from Lown Aerospace. I do hope you enjoyed it, although we are still waiting for the shuttle to come to a full stop. And there it is. So, uh... Yeah, this thing does break apart quite easily on touchdown. I may be speaking from experience here. Uh, so you may want to make, just make sure the auto strut is all working, working correctly and make sure you're touching down with very, very little vertical speed and not much horizontal speed either, to be honest, as well. But there we go. We can do some quick sweeping around of the space shuttle. We can have a quick little look at what we have left in orbit. The space station there uh, sitting majestically above Kerbin, complete with its fuel tank. Maybe I should do another video extend this because I quite like the way it's shaping up. We could add some more solar panels to uh, uh, facilitate that extra bit of electrical uh, usage required, I guess, maybe. Although the fuel tank doesn't really draw much power, does it? And we could even use that docking arm to then lead to another lab section. Wow, we've got to write this down, mate. I've got to write this down. But yeah, uh, like I say, the video is pretty much over. I hope you enjoyed it. In just a second on screen, there'll be some links. But in the description, there are links already to uh, uh, Instagram, Twitter, Discord... And then on screen, the links are now appeared. Uh, there's a link to Patreon and subscribe. And on screen, in terms of the videos, there is one uh, specially chosen for you by YouTube's algorithm. And the other one's just my most recent upload. Running out of things to talk about now, so I'm just going to end it there. Goodbye.